I'm here to talk about this week's jackpot with Mshamba. Kwa ni Mshamba wako wapi? Niko hapa. Kwa ni unioni? Wes! Kwa ni what's the occasion? Wa uchui. Si leo tuna introduce millionaires kwa millionaires club. Mmejua hao ni millionaires tangu ndoto waanze. Angalia, kuna John kutoka Takoreti, kuna huyu Rose kutoka Ruiru. Una ngocha nini? Unaweza kuwa among this list. Ukifanya nini cheza ndoto? Join Millionaire's Club. Win every day with Lotto. Play now for a chance to win a guaranteed 100,000 shillings in the Super Sunday draw tonight. Plus, get a free chance to win over 1 million shillings on Wednesday. Cheza to Zidi Pomoja. Send 50 shillings to pay bill 77000. Account Ibru. Over 18s only. Gaming can be addictive. Play responsibly. This message has been approved by the PCLB. We see them on our screens but do not know what they've gone through, hence the effort portrayed out there, some being proud of their humble beginnings, while others do not even want to be associated with it. But for one John Mutua, commonly known as Kaploti Mwenyewe, being associated with the slums is not a big deal. Our journey from the CBD Nairobi to Kayole to meet up with Kaploti was not an easy one, but finally it was a success. Ah, kwa majina na ito John Mutua, Nimelelewa, nimekuwa katika mazingira haya, nimekuwa mkazi wa Soweto kutoka kipindi kile cha kitambo mpaka sasa. Mini firstborn kwa watoto kwa, kwa familia ambayo ina watoto watano. Nikiwa mimi ndio firstborn kuna wengine, vijana wengine na pia na dada mmoja peke yake. E, so hiyo ndio familia yetu. E, babangu aliaga. So niliyebaki naye ni mamangu na shangazi yangu na ma uncle. Kusoma nilisomea shule shule nilisoma kitambo kile ilikuwa inaitwa jaribu. Baadaye wakaja wakabadilisha jina ikawa thawabu. So kitambo kile primary nilisoma thawabu. Secondary nikasoma shule ya Kikatoliki ilikuwa inaitwa Justino. Na pale nikamaliza nikafanya mpaka form 4 na katika yale maisha ya shule Ilikuwa fresh, nilikuwa, na, nilikuwa mtu ambaye nilikuwa nimependeka shule kwa sabu ya ile nafanya mziki nini, ilikuwa na entertain watu sana. A young man that has been born and raised from a humble background, but the mentality of the environment could not limit his dreams. Despite the fact that he feels not wanted because of where he hails from, Kaploti had to cope up with the situation, hence understanding the fact that his parents were not in a position to provide this pushed him to be an independent person. Abdul Kalam states, never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place. That is the unique you. Have an aim in life, continuously acquire knowledge, work hard and have perseverance to realize the great life. Ukiangalia okay, maisha ya hapa, haya maisha ni maisha kidogo tutasema si maisha fresh sana. Unajua? Lakini tunakop nao vile hiko. Inabidi you adjust. Uso ilibidi Mimi aswa binafsi mwenye ilibidi ni adjust na situation vile hiko. Sijaka kwa maisha nzuri, sijaka kwa maisha ya kiposh. Unajua? Lakini ile kidogo na shukuru mwenyezi mungu. Kukosa, kukosa school fees, unafukuzwa, unakuja homu, baba pia hana, mama hana. E, inabidi wanakuambia ngoja. E, ngoja itapatikana, inakuwa tu ni ishu, haipatikani, unajua? Eh so ni vitu vya kawaida ni vitu nilipitia ile kukosa kukosa school fees mara saa nyingine unakuja home mpata kuna lunch yani inabidi tu unakoma tu na jiji unaingia shule tu bila hata kutia kitu tumbo nini so ni maisha ambayo ni maisha sitaki pia kukani kama nalia sana kwa sababu nilia just na situation vile iko unajua kwa naamini kitu kimoja katika maisha ukipatiwa lemon Jaribu uwezavyo ibadilishe iwe lemon yetu, unajua? So nilipitia maisha magumu lakini mwisho wa siku, yale maisha siku kubali ya ni define. His music journey started way back while in secondary school, where he realized that he had a talent in music, hence pursuing it to the fullest, even after high school. While still pursuing music, Kaploti had other side hustles to sustain him, not knowing that this was the beginning of another journey, prison life. Nikiwa sec ndio nikiwa ni kidato cha pili ama secondary ndio ile time ambayo nilikuwa najijua ndio ile time ambayo nilikuwa najaribu sana kujikaza ili nitoke kwenye haya maisha. Na ndio kipindi kile nika nika wanafanya mziki sana. Na katika kule kufanya mziki kwa mziki 
according to according to music industry ya Kenya vile iko constructed inakuwa ni ngumu sana upate upate spotlight ukiwa kwenye hii mita so mara nyingi nilikuwa inanibidi mimi ni token niende zangu town ili kutafuta kutafuta showcasing platform nilikuwa najaribu sana kutafuta kitu cha kujikimu kwenye maisha nilikuwa natafuta ajira sana kitu kitu ambayo imekuwa vijana wengi tunafanya huwa mara nyingi ni kufungua ni kuji self employ na kufungua ka business mahali ka side hustle kwa sababu hii time na hustle mziki lazima pia na na hustle kitu kingine so nilikuwa na stall hii stall nilikuwa nafanya kazi zilikuwa kazi kama mbili wajua lazima ushikanishe ndio at the end of the day umeke kitu So nilikuwa na nilikuwa na nilikuwa pande moja kuna kinyozi pande nyingine nilikuwa nauza nguo nguo nini viatu wajua zile waenda gikomba waokota okota viatu second and nini waleta alafu at least upate upate ka kitu mwisho wa siku sasa cha kushangaza ni ile biashara yangu na ule mziki ndio itakuwa sababu ambayo itaniingiza kwenye ile issue ile issue ya kwenda kamiti ni ni hustle zile wafanya nini alafu na wale majama zako nini tulikuwa na vijana kadhaa tuko twasaidiana leo nikiwa siko ya nakuwa leo nikiwa niko ya yuko azinile kupatia na break nini mtu anaweza fanya kitu kingine so mimi nikawa hivi mimi nilitoka nikienda zangu town nikienda kutafuta zile platform ambazo nimekukumbusha pale baadaye kuwa zi platform zilikuanza kutafuta shows ni showcase talent yangu ni showcase miziki yangu nione kama kuna nitapata kuwa spotted. So mimi nikatoka nikaacha majamaa pale pale kwenye ile zile stalls. Nikienda zangu town, nenda kutafuta shows. So mi nimengoja zile show nimepiga. Nilipiga vizuri sana na nakumbuka ilikuwa ilikuwa karaoke night. So nikapiga karaoke nzuri. Ile ile platform tu umepewa umeperform poa, alafu nge, nika nikapanda gari za kuja mita. So mi nikija kufika mita ni kitu ilikuwa kitu saa sa, 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 sa tisa usiku kule. Wakati nakuja kufika kwenye stall yangu nikapata kuna wat, kuna vijana, vijana kama watatu wane wanafanya kazi. Hawafanyi kazi legal, wanafanya kazi legal. Walikuwa na mnyonga mtu. Sawa? Walikuwa na mnyonga mtu. So mimi nikija kufika nakumbuka vizuri wale vijana waliniambia msanii msanii umekosea kutokea tulikuwa tunamaliza hii hustle umenielewa nikauliza mwafanya hustle lakini hii hustle mwaifanyi hapa baya alafu makosa zaidi ni ile stall ndio nilikuwa naitegemea alafu pia ile issue wanafanya yule jamaa kesho atasema alibiwa hapa so itakuwa ni nani huyu mwenye stall Wajua kesho wake watanipata pale kwa stall. Itabaki huyu mwenye stall itabidi atupatie wale majamaa. Unaona? Na mita mita kitu moja it, it, it's a golden rule. Mita we don't snitch. Katika kule kubishana. Katika ile back and forth back and forth. Polisi walikuwa na patrol. Tukapatikana si wote pale. Tulipopatikana pale si wote ikabaki Hakuna wa kuondoka hakuna nini polisi hawabagui hawajui ati si kuwa hiyo time ya kusema si kuwa hakuna umenipata so ikabaki ni nini sisi wote tulale chini kipindi kile tunalala chini pia huyu mwenye alikuwa ananyang'anywa amelala chini umenipata so huyu mwenye amelala chini hawa majamaa walikuwa shamdunga kisu tayari umenielewa sasa sina sina time ya kusema mimi sikuwa. Na sina time ya kusema hawa siwajui. Sisi wote kwenye rundo moja. Wale polisi walikuwa nasema tuteremshia majamaa, haina haja kuwapeleka station. Au twende tu tumalize hii maneno. Tumalize tu shughuli mara moja si twende zetu. Ilikuwa ni nini? Ikue extrajudicial killing. Umenielewa? kilichosababisha sisi kutofanyiwa hivyo katika ile commotion wanashukuru Mungu sana nashukuru Mungu sana katika ile commotion watu walitoka 
ma, watu ploti kadhaa watu walitoka I, wakazuia wale polisi kutochukua kuteremsha kututeremsha kutumaliza unaona hiyo ndio ilikuwa bahati yetu hiyo ndio that's the only chance that is making me to talk about this kwa uh, manjina mimi ni Rose Nsomo Ruthi Mpite Nsomo mimi ni anti aka plot kuhusu maisha yake pile namjua alikuwa mtoto mzuri pile alizaliwa kulewa kwake alikuwa mtoto asumbui alikuwa mpole aongei sasa alieleka alikuwa mtoto kazi yake ilikuwa ni kucheza mpira na kuimba hata akiwa mdogo alianza akiwa mtoko sana kuimba tulikuwa tunamuuliza sasa we unashinda kuimba utakuja kuwa mwimbaji anatuambia atakuwa atakuja kuwa mwimbaji sasa akaendelea kucheza mpira akaacha mpira akakuwa wa kucheza hakuwa anasumbua hata tulishangaa pili alikuja kushikwa ilikuwa tu ni bahati mbaya if there is an individual that has tested the wrath of corrupt government officials then it is kaploti being sent to jail for an offense committed by other people who were later released hence kaploti carrying their cross so sisi tukawa station tumekaa nini ikapita siku tatu tuko tu pale cha kushangaza ni mimi nimeshikwa nimeshikwa na watu watatu but wale watu watatu nashangaa kuona one by one watu wanaenda nyumbani one by one watu wanaenda nyumbani so mimi ndio nilikuja kubakiwa mwisho nikaja kuelewa kuwa ama jamaa waliweza kutoa ile mlungula walikuwa naitishwa waliweza ku bribe so wazazi wao in short walitoa kitu wakawa naachiliwa one by one nikabaki mimi peke yangu so nilipobaki peke yangu ikawa mother, mother you aja ananiuliza nini ile walikuwa naitishwa hela ambayo hela ni abnong max ya zazi ni mimi kwangu yani ile pesa naionea tu kwa tv mimi siwezi pata ile hela so ikawa ni ngumu ikabaki kwa sababu hela sina mimi ndio nikabeba mzigo ikawa zile file ni mimi naenda nazo kapelekwa makadara nilipopelekwa makadara makadara niliposomewa charges nilishangaa charges zilikuwa ilikuwa kaunti ya kwanza ilikuwa kaunti ya robbery with violence kaunti ya pili ilikuwa kaunti ya inamada ndani yake umeelewa so ndio leta nikakamkujua hii kaunti ya mada ilikuwa kumbe yule jamaa aliaga umeelewa yule jamaa ambaye alidungwa kiswa aliaga so kaunti kaingia kaunti ya mada na kaunti ya robbery Ah uh, hiyo time nakumbuka nilipelekwa hiyo time kamiti kamiti ndio ilikuwa the only place ilikuwa inapelekwa watu watu wako wanapelekwa industrial area so mimi nikapelekwa kamiti as in nili find ni life ingine tofauti sana una kuwa inakuwa ni eye open kwako cuz ni place sijawahi kanyanga sijui nakaaje then you go all of a sudden you meet the the wrongful people in the society as in wale watu wabaya kabisa kwa society unawakuta sasa ndi hawa sasa ndio ndugu zako ndio unakaa nao sasa being imprisoned for kaploti was an experience that he will never forget this affected him psychologically physically just to mention but a few his music career not being an exception but he never gave up and finally kaploti was released hence another chapter of his life Sel moja nilikuwa nakaa na watu 200. Unaona? Na nika 6 by 10, mkaa watu 200 alafu ni pale mlale, ni pale and then even 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 toilet ilikuwa ni pale ndani. Naweza sema conditions za jela kuna vile zilini affect pakubwa health wise kwa sababu mara nyingi nakumbuka nilikuwa nakumbwa ni malaria sana kule wajua kule hakuna mosquito net sijui nini wajua hizi luxury kidogo ngumu so mara nyingi malaria ilikuwa inantandika sana alafu kule kuna upele kinoma unajua upele ilikuwa inatandika watu kinoma sana alafu pia askari jela askari jela ni kunguni viroboto chawa e, mazingira kulala watu walali kwa kitanda watu walikuwa nalala chini nguo zako ndio na nguo zako ndio mattress So mara nyingi unapata nguo zako ndizo walalia, nguo zako ndizo wavaa. 
So kama una nguo utaumia. Health wise ilikuwa ina, inaniumiza mimi sana. Feel life ya mtaa itafanya utakop na mahali popote unaenda. Unajua? So nilipoingia kule I can tell you this for for free. Nilipo step in. Nili adjust to the situation. Yani mind ili switch. Nikajua sasa hapa sina mamangu, sina babangu, sina nani, sina nani ni mimi. As in ndio nimeingia hapa. So I have to know how to get myself out of this situation. So ilibidi mimi mwenye ni ngangane kujua ni vipi nita jitoa hapa. Upande usanii nikisema upande ya kimziki nikiwa nje mziki ulikuwa umefika mali ilikuwa mabaki kidogo tu yani ni hit yani blow in short but nilipoingia kamiti ilinirudisha three steps backward cuz pale exposure hakuna so now you have to leave this music lazima uiweke kando kwanza udeal na the situation currently uko in ita yote nangangana na story ya kesi na kumbuka sa, vizuri sana nilisaidika na mtu mmoja kuna jamaa kuna jamaa time alikuwa alikuwa na kesi 88 pale hivi alikuwa anaitwa Shimoli Shimoli alikuwa ni alikuwa ni walikuwa namuita veteran alikuwa hiyo jua kesi so mara nyingi kamiti walikuwa naeka court, court room session court room session unapata this side unapata kuna prosecution side this side mimi nasimama and then we practice how to how to get yourself out of the proceedings as a court na blah blah so mara nyingi mimi nilikuwa nikisimama na sema kesi yangu alafu naambo hapana hapa utafanya hivi hapa utafanya hivi hapa utafanya hivi na ndio ujitoe lazima uweke hivi na hivi na hivi bahati yangu ya mwisho ambayo ilikuwa ni kuja kuachiliwa niliachiliwa vipi Nili, niliitwa tu nikiwa 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 kwa nikiwa, nikiwa tu kwa sel hata sikuwa najua Nilipoitwa kutoka kwa sel nikaambwa nahitajika kotini. So ilikuwa ni ilikuwa nimeitwa na mention ya lazima as in judge alikuwa ame alikuwa ameshauliza huyu jamaa yuko wapi. So mimi nilienda kotini nikiwa peke yangu. So judge aliniambia you have no case, nini, you have no case to mention. The only thing that is left I'll have to do a ruling. Akaniambia ruling itakuwa saa nane na itakuwa kwa private chamber. So hizo hizo terms zote nasema sikuwa nazielewa mimi niko nashindwa hata private chamber ni nini ruling hata sielewi unaona so ruling nikawa nauliza watu kule makadara kwa sel kule nyuma nikiwa na ngoja ruling ni nini so kuna jamaa aliniambia jamaa alikuwa na kesi tofauti alikuwa mmoja kati ya wale wameletwa aliniambia ikiwa ni ruling that means most probably either unaenda nyumbani So mi kidogo nikawa na ile eh na muamini kidogo pia simuamini naona eh u jamaa anaweza kuwa labda na ananieka tu jazba tu ile kunieka morale yani nione mambo ni fresh na enyewe ni wakati niliitwa private chamber sikuamini niliachiliwa na section 210 kwa yote tukasema kwa Mungu ni asante juu alikuja kuto, kutoka vile walijua hakuwa na mako na makosa kuachiliwa na section 210 ukumbuke nimeitwa nime, nime kotini nobody knows as in my father my mother my brothers and everybody my relatives hakuna mtu anajua so mimi nimeachiliwa na ukiachiliwa you have to go back so as in uende u sign out lazima u sign vitabu kwa you no longer you no longer a prisoner you are free to go you can go home na naenda home ukumbuke jela hawana time yako ukishaachiliwa wewe sasa you no longer there their person ama you no longer their prisoner so you just go home they don't care vile utafika nyumbani huh. with no penny to reach home after his release he managed to reach home through well wishes that he had explained his condition to reaching home the family was shocked to see their son back because they had no idea of his release but for Kaploti it was a reunion with his family hapa nimeachiliwa lakini sijui nitafika nyumbani aje so ikabidi the only option nilifanya <coughs> nilienda nika nikaambia makanga 
nimeachiliwa na atakonifikisha tu home it's like nili hike tu nili hike tu gari tu inipeleke mta na that's how nili find home nilipofika home ah nakumbuka my mom my mom ali alishtuka alishtuka kiasi cha hakuweza kuongea ilibidi tu nikulia tu cuz alikuwa like I expect kuona mtu kama the last person and I expect kuona ni mtu kama mimi. One thing that he had to do was to forgive those that made him serve in jail and to prove to the community that he was innocent which was not an easy task. Integration into the society likuwa hard. Hard hard kabisa. Reason being ama jamaa eh uh, walikuwa na believe kuwa nilifanya Nobody alikuwa na believe kuwa naweza kosa kuwa si, si kufanya. Everybody was like, ah, yani huyu tulikuwa tunakaa naye na kumbe this is the type of a person he is. So ilikuwa ngumu sana integration into the society. Ilinichukua muda sana kabla people to start believing in you. Eh, ilikuwa ngumu sana. Uh, the only uh, au majama walifanya tu niende ndani kuna mmoja tu ndio nishakutana naye unajua nishakutana na mmoja na ikawa ni ngumu kuzungumza naye ikawa ni ngumu kupatana kwa sababu nilimpata yani ashakuwa tu yani ashakuwa swallowed tu na hii life ya life ngumu uh, ni drunkard drug addict ajielewi so ikawa ni ngumu ni ngumu for me to question him So the only thing nilimwachia Mungu cause unajua mtu amefikia hiyo state ya kwa ni ngumu His biggest task was to get back into music which all together was another journey not an easy one but perseverance made it possible Nikaanza ku hustle vile nitarudi kwa mziki but ilikuwa ngumu since kumbuka bado mimi ni mtu ametoka jela hiyo time yote Hakuna mtu ambaye ana wili ako willing kukusaidia especially kuna hiyo tag ya we ni prisoner una imagine nilitoka Kayole ambapo ni Sowe sasa so napiga route 11 kutoka Sowe mpaka South B eh naweza sema ni it's like it's like ni kama kutoka kutoka Kayole kwenda town na kutoka town kurudi Kayole it's back and forth kwenda na kurudi so you can imagine your distance but i was willing to sacrifice kuenda tu ilikuwa yani nilikuwa nimeamua liwalo na liwe nitaenda so mimi nikatoka nikaenda nika make sure nimepiga route 11 na fota tu njia tu mimi naenda so pale nika meet na Jesse Jesse anijui so nikamu explainia nikamwambia eh hey, mimi naitwa hivi na nimekuja mimi ni msanii nataka unisaidie Jesse akanambia lazima nikusikie kwanza ndio nijue kama nitakusaidia. So Jesse nikamwambia ni sawa ina issue. Mimi nikamfanyia nyimbo mbili tatu akaona na potential. Jesse akanambia atakuwa na ni record usiku. The time clients wameisha at least I can come and he record for a small amount. But hii ilikuwa kunisaidia. Siwezi nikasema nishamlipa kitu Jesse. Jesse alikuwa tu nikunsaidia. That's the only person the first person alinisaidia kutoa my first record until to date ni naye tu twafanya muziki up to date naweza sema kwa sasa hii ni kama miaka kumi tukiwa na Jesse so that's the producer ambaye alinitoa from point A to point niko sasa kibao cha kwanza kilikuwa kinajiita kaploti na nilipotoa kaploti strategy nilitumia ilikuwa ni strategy ya kuipatia na for free kwa wale watu ambao wote wanajaribu kwa njia moja ama nyingine kujaribu kupenya iwe ni mziki, iwe ni kimaisha, iwe ni chochote kile unafanya. Kitu naamini tu put God first then hata ukimweka Mungu mbele lazima pia we upigane. Lazima pia ujisukume na ujitume kwa njia ambayo ni halali na si njia ya mkato. Mimi nazidi kushika watu mkono kupitia mfungwa ni binadamu initiative 
wanafanya visitation za jela each and every month mu wana make sure tumerudi jela mtu yote ambaye anatoka jela tuna try ku integrate kwa society vizuri cuz mimi sikupata hiyo opportunity ya ku integrate kwa society vizuri na upande wa serikali yetu nasema tu wange, wangezidi kutia bidii katika kule ku, kuhakikisha haki na usawa inapatikana wakati wote kuna mshukiwa haki na usawa ikipatikana itakuwa sawa si tunaweza sema kwa serikali wakishika mtu lazima kwanza wajue waangalie kama alikuwa na makosa ama hakuwa na makosa ndio wamfunge ama wamwachilie with all this happening in the society where is the common wananchi supposed to run to in times of trouble the same people that are meant to protect us as a nation are the same harming us bribes have become normal in this generation stand up and be the change you want to see in the community for change starts with you